Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ. Week seven in college football. We got some good ones for you. The number one team in the nation, Georgia, taking on Vandy. An SEC matchup with AM and Tennessee. There we go. I can say Tennessee. Top 10 matchup with Oregon and Washington. UM and UNC. Hopefully, some better. Uh, decisions there from Mario Cristobal with UM. I know huh. all of our Canes fans in our office were oh questioning boy. the uh, not taking a knee. USC, Notre Dame and UCLA and Oregon State. And we wanted to get some picks. We had Wait, originally Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell. First off, originally, Danny hasn't been here in weeks. What what is, he where is he? He's on, he's on the driving range yeah, right now? These are clearly priorities <laughs> for DK. This is why he can't be here with us, but that's okay, Chris, because we have our celebrity guest picker, which is none other than Pete we, Frisco. We flew him in. Should I start ripping on Colorado like Danny does all yeah. the time on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, what do you think of Shador Sanders? Well, I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Danny gets so worked up over things. <laughs> he's always going after the There's Twitter well. Danny and there's real life Danny. Two it's, different people. They, they are. are. They really are. They Danny's are, so are. nice in person. Yeah, yes. They are. Okay, well, Danny, if you're watching, we hope you are um, enjoying it. Well, he's not he's watching. Well, he could be watching. streaming he's on right. the app. We don't know. All right, let's get your picks, though. We're going to talk about Oregon and Washington first. A top 10 matchup. Uh, Heisman Trophy odds on the line, of course, or implications, I should say, with Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. What do you like for this matchup, Brady? We'll start with you. A few things to start off. This is the first time these two teams have squared off. This is a great rivalry in college football, but first time they've both been ranked in the top 10. So kind of interesting. And if you remember last year's game, this was a tight one. There were six lead changes down the stretch. Ultimately, UW ended up pulling away. And these are two of the top three scoring offenses in all the country, only to be beat out by USC and Caleb Williams. So my favorite bet on this one is the over. I think there'll be a lot of points scored in this one, even though both teams statistically are pretty good defensively. Uh, my concern is this. I think Oregon's the more complete team when you really look at how they break it down. They can run the football. They've got a three-headed uh, monster in the backfield with Bucky Irving, uh, Noah Whittington, and Jordan James. Uh, Tony Franklin's their big play receiver on the outside. Defensively, they can get pressure and they can cover, and they're good at stopping the run. Not that Washington really wants to run the football. Michael Penix is going to sling the football around. I don't know which, which side to go on this one. So at, at three points, I'll gladly take the three in Oregon here, but if I had to really play this, it just, it'd be the over. I think that's the best play between these two teams. The over is a great play. Uh, here's the other thing. Remember back in the day, they said, oh, it's Pac-12, Pac-10 game. They throw it around. Nobody plays like that. Well, now everybody plays like that. Hmm. These guys just do it a little bit more. I love watch. Give me all of this, all of it. Bo Nix, uh, Penix, throwing it all around. All those receivers, they all can run. It's all spread out. This is my kind of game. I will enjoy this. And I think, you, Chris, you're calling the game. You're going to hear the siren a lot because Washington's going to win this game and cover and continue ascending wow. into the possibility mm. of being one of the playoff teams. A couple concerns. Washington not great at getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. And on top of that, Jalen McMillan, one of their best receivers. It's a, the trio, best. it's a trio of receivers. Hasn't played the past couple of games. Both teams coming off buys, mm. so maybe he's ramping himself if up. He's to playing, this if he's one. playing with those three guys spread out, they're going to put up a 45 spot. Okay. Huge matchup. That get, that that place is going to be off the charts. Husky <laughs> Stadium. It's been a while since they've had a game this big in that building. Elsewhere in the Pac-12, UCLA, Oregon State, top 20 matchup. Both teams have one loss. This is in Corvallis. We saw Utah go in there and kind of faced a buzzsaw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, both have lost in Pac-12 play. So this really ultimately amounts to an elimination game as we start to see all that parity in the Pac-12. Start to, they sort of cannibalize one another. And this is the start of that with UCLA taking on Oregon State and their chance potentially for playing for a Pac-12 championship. So this was a tough one for me. Another odd number when you're looking at this line and saying at four points. Uh, my concern is whether or not Oregon State can stop the rushing attack of UCLA. UCLA, and in particular, Carson Steele has been phenomenal for them. But UCLA has been one of the more physical, dominant teams on the ground. And when you go back to their earlier loss, it really came down to a team putting this game on the true freshman quarterback, Dante Moore's shoulders. I don't know that Oregon State will be able to do that. And even though Corvallis is a tough place to go play, tough place to get a win, not saying UCLA wins. I think they keep this one within the number. A tight game, but one that also hits the over. I think there'll be a decent amount of points in this one, Pete. I think it's going to be tough for the freshman quarterback quarterback I, I just think this is too much for him it's too too big a moment I, I just that's a tough you mentioned it I anybody who's been there when yeah, they're, they're good not. that place is hard and they just so right on the stadium and, they're, and they've always been right on top of you it's a tough place to play I think Oregon State covers and wins the game 
Okay. All right, next up we have USC and Notre Dame. For Notre Dame, when you look at their schedule, this is really like their fourth big game in a row with Ohio State, Duke, Louisville, and now USC. USC, Notre Dame is probably their biggest, or it is, toughest test yet, and we know that defense has just been horrendous. Brady? It's been atrocious. They, they've struggled versus the pass. They've struggled to stop the run. They, they, they had 34 missed tackles the past two weeks. I mean, and these are the same concerns USC really had last year. That being said, they have the ultimate equalizer. That's Caleb Williams. I mean, he's the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. If Zachariah last Branch, week, well, he wasn't, but he, he, well, if you watch the final play, he was on that play enough to win that game right. for them. And that's what he brings to the table is that sort of playmaking ability. And if they get Zachariah Branch back, their outstanding true freshman wide receiver, that's a big time problem. When I watched that young man play he reminds me a lot of Reggie Bush with his ability in the return game and a wide receiver in the different ways they utilize him so Notre Dame coming off a loss where let's be honest they weren't the more physical team versus Louisville you know it was in prime time top 25 matchup and they didn't play their best game and now they've got to come back in prime time for another tough matchup are they up for the task if Notre Dame runs the football with Audric Estime and Sam Hartman's able to complete just a few big plays down the field I think this one's a ball game I think you lay the three points here with Notre Dame lean into that home field advantage but if they can't find production on the ground it could be tough especially the inability for Notre Dame lately to push the ball down the field vertically that could become a problem if, if this thing becomes a shootout Sam Hartman's been bad he's been bad I think he reverses that trend a little bit because I think Brady at your advanced age you could go <laughs> under center and go back to Notre Dame we won't say bush push but you can go back to Notre Dame this week and you could throw for 300 I, against I'll put that it this defense. way I'd love the opportunity versus this <laughs> USC team not that, the one that was coming Coming off no. two national championships at a third run. This oh. USC defense is awful. I mean, Arizona State, who is terrible, moved the ball up and down the field on them. Notre Dame will use, they weren't physical last week. They will be physical here. They will run the ball and run the ball, and Hartman will hit some shots down the field. I'll take the Irish. One thing that the SC defense does a very good job of is pressuring opposing quarterbacks. And that's why I say, you, if you're Notre Dame, you can't become one dimensional right. and be sitting back there in pass happy mode. They do have the ability to rush the passer on the outside. Coverage is a different story and whether or not they can tackle once the ball's out, different story. But that's the deal for Notre Dame. They can't get stuck, stuck as a one-dimensional team trying to throw the football around. USC keeps winning and keeps dropping in the polls because of that defense. These guys think that's going to get them finally this week. All right, this is an interesting game. Miami, after the, the absolute disaster where they didn't need the ball, going to North Carolina. North Carolina's perfect. This was supposed to be a matchup of perfect teams. I, if I'm a Carolina fan, I hate this spot where Miami's coming in after what just happened. Yeah, and they're, they're given three and a half points, and you've got a Miami team that, if you really look at last week's game, they should have won. They could have just kneeled on the football, and instead, they find themselves in an unusual position where the worst-case scenario happens. Cheney fumbles after getting over 100 yards, which may have played into that decision, and then your defense gives up in, what, a couple of plays, a touchdown to allow Georgia Tech to win. So they should be ticked off. They should realize they've been all around the better team between them and UNC this year. But again, we go back to what's the ultimate equalizer? The quarterback. And Drake May is one of the best in college football. Statistically, it hasn't looked great, but they got back Tez Walker last week. He had a little bit of an impact, so this could be a big-time challenge. Another one that I'm not saying that uh, Miami's going to win this one, but I'll take the three and a half points. And I think the other one in this one I like is the over. Tyler Van Dyke's been fantastic for Miami this year. They can also run the football. I think this will be one of those up-and-down games between UNC and Miami. I have two knees. Mario Cristobal could take one. Take a damn knee, Mario. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm sitting there watching. I go, what is this idiot doing? And we forgot he did it back in the day when he was at Oregon against Stanford and cost him a game. That's the second time he's done that. These coaches don't know situational football. And you, I know the offensive coordinator might, might have wanted to get the kid 100 yards, and so he's, he's responsible. Ultimately, the head coach is responsible. He botched it. He ruined their season by doing that. But you said they were the better team. They were pushed to the limit by a bad Georgia Tech. Team. Doesn't that matter. Should they have good. won? Should they have won? Yes, they should okay. have won. But they were pushed to limit. Bad Georgia Tech team. Drake May will be the better quarterback by far in this game. He will have a big day. I'll take North Carolina minus the points. And if it gets late, I always know Cristobal won't take a knee. He'll fumble and they'll get a touchdown late to cover the number. My only question, you Pete, is if you are indeed going to give away that knee, can I be the one to chop it off? If you feel like, <laughs> oh. if, you, if you want to, because Cristobal needs to know what a knee is in football.
<laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> anywhere on the board, your best bet for week seven. Pete, you are the celeb here, so you can you can go first and have the honors. He's going to be on one side of Washington. I'm going to the other side. Okay. Wazoo. Arizona, back-to-back -back road games. Huh? They put a ton into playing against USC last okay. week and went to overtime. Now they go play Washington State. Cam Ward, big day. I like Washington State, minus the eight. Yeah, that will be interesting. I, I liked that game when I was looking at it, thinking, like, can Arizona get up again for what's going to be a tough offense, one of the better quarterbacks in college football on Cam Ward. I'm going to go with the under of Penn State taking on UMass. UMass has been dreadful this year, only one win on the season. Penn State, they're going to get out to a big lead. They're going to score a lot of points. UMass, not so much, because who does Penn State have next week? Do you know what's on their schedule? The Ohio Maybe. State Buckeyes. And so if I am James Franklin, I want to make sure I get my starters in there, get him some good work, lay up a 50-burger, and then get them out of there. And you don't see much scoring there in the second this half. This is like an SEC thing here. A, a Big Ten team playing a non-con patsy right in the middle of the season before a big game? Well, they're not taking a bye before one of the biggest games, which is a typical SEC move. But yeah, they right. are scheduling a non-conference cup game. You're going to Seattle. Have you ever been to the Palouse? Have you ever been to Washington no. State? Uh -huh. I've been to Washington. I've been to Pullman. Yeah. 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 When we were in college, you, in what age? The drinking age in Washington was 21, so we went to Idaho that night before the game because Wait, I was what? only 18. Why? What were you doing up there? <laughs> Going, I was the stats guy on the broadcast crew yeah. for Arizona State. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah. you've been working for like 60 years. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, close. <laughs> it, it, it's not work when you have fun, right, Pete? No, it's not. Having fun even at 80 years young. People <laughs> oh celebrated the 80 last week. <laughs> Uh, recapping Brady's picks and our thanks to our celebrity guest picker, Pete Prisco. Brady likes some dogs, likes Oregon, <laughs> UCLA, and Where's Miami. My and he Where's really my loves picks the on over. That thing, huh? You're just the celebrity Someone's guest doing picker. your dirty, Pete. Jeez. That's it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Appreciate it.